Hey guys, welcome back to another most amazing top 10 with me, Danny Burke. This is the channel where we take all kinds of weird and wonderful things from all around the world and put them into a nice little top 10 list so you don't have to. And today we've got the top 10 scariest creepypastas for you. If you guys don't know what creepypasta is, then the website creepypasta.org describes it best when they say it's the internet definition for short stories designed to unnerve, disturb, and frighten the reader. The creepiest ones get copied and pasted all over the internet. That gives them the name creepypasta. Now, if that sounds like your kind of thing, then good because we've got the top 10 creepypastas right here for you. Let's get into this. Before we get started, I want to know from you guys what is the scariest story you know? Whether it's long or it's short, let me know down below and who knows, maybe it could be the next big creepypasta. To get onto our list though, we'll have to be at number 10, which is the creepy text message story. So this creepypasta is actually a website where you can click a button to reveal the next part of a conversation between two friends. The girl is called Annie96 and the guy is called McDavy. It all starts off pretty normal until Annie says she can hear noises coming from outside in the garden. When she looks outside, she sees a man digging in the dirt. Annie tells McDavy to quit messing around in the garden as she knows it's only him, but McDavy swears it's not. But Annie doesn't believe him, and next thing she knows, this man is in the house, calling out to her. Annie hides in the closet, frantically texting McDavy as the monster gets closer and closer and closer. But at the last second, the monster disappears and it seems like a happy ending, with Annie inviting McDavy over the next day. But then McDavy says, Wait, Annie, how do I know this is you? And Annie 96 goes offline. Mental. Talk about an emotional roller coaster to kick us off here, guys. We're gonna jump right into number nine now, which is a short but sweet creepy pasta called The Man in the Snow. You are home alone and you hear on the news about the profile of a murderer who is on the loose. You look out the sliding glass doors to your backyard and you notice a man standing in the snow. He fits the profile of the murderer exactly and he is smiling at you. You gulp. Picking up the phone to your right and dialing 911, you look back out the glass as you press the phone to your ear and notice he is much closer to you now. You then drop the phone in shock. There are no footprints in the snow. It's his reflection. Whoever said creepypastas had to be long to be scary was lying. Actually, I don't think anyone's ever said that anyway. But let's move right on to number eight, which is called The Portraits. It's a tale of a hunter, alone in the woods as nighttime approaches. He tries to find his way out but gets lost. Instead, stumbling upon a small cabin. He found nobody inside and decided to rest there for the night and explain himself to the owner in the morning. As he looks around the house, he sees the walls aligned with portraits of faces. Twisted, ugly, evil faces and they're all staring at him. He turns his back, faces to the wall and eventually falls asleep. The next morning he wakes up, blinking in the sunlight as he rises. He discovers that the cabins had no portraits on the wall, only windows. Ugh, okay, that was a good one, but let's move right onto our number seven, which is an email chain called The Candle Cove. It starts off with a bunch of friends reminiscing about a TV show they used to watch as a kid called Candle Cove. They stitched their memories of the show together bit by bit. It was about a girl called Janice who would imagine herself as friends with pirates. Their ship was called the Laughing Stock, and one of their crew was Pirate Percy, who was scared of everything. It all comes flooding back as they piece their memories together, even the villains of the show, who were called Horace Horrible and the Skin Taker, a skeleton that wore a top hat and a cape made out of children's skin. Suddenly they begin to remember a horrible episode where the puppets were just screaming and screaming and screaming. The camera would cut from character to character as they let out a blood curdling scream. Even the girl Janice was moaning and crying like she had been tortured for hours. The email ends with one of the guys saying he went to the nursing home that day to go and see his mother and he asked her, do you remember if I watched a show called Candle Cove? And she said she did. She said, because I used to think it was so strange that you said, I'm gonna go watch Candle Cove now, mom. And then you would tune the TV to static and just watch dead air for 30 minutes. You had a big imagination with your little pirate show. Nope, 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 okay. Let's move on to number six and it's called Never Again. It's the tale of a 17 year old girl with an abusive mother who lets a little girl into her house from a storm outside. The girl is emotionless, unaffected by the cold and has big black eyes. She says her name is Lacey Morgan. The girl says Lucy can stay. She sets her up with a blanket in her home. But when she wakes up the next day, Lacey is gone. The girl switches on the news and sees that a little girl called Lacey Morgan was killed last night at 7 p.m hours before the girl let her into her own home. The news says she was killed by her abusive mother, an abusive mother just like the girl has herself. That night, the girl tries to get a normal night's sleep, but is instead awoken by the touch of Lucy's hand, who whispers, never again. 10 minutes later, there is a shriek from her abusive mother in the next room. She runs in to find Lucy on top of her, tearing flesh from her chest and throat. 
Lucy smiles before going for the jugular. The girl faints at the sight of it. Years later, the girl is now free from her abusive mother. She's married and has her own daughter, who she named Lucy. She ends the story with a chilling update from just the other day when she said she saw a little girl running barefoot through our neighbor's backyard up to their back door. It was around midnight, so I couldn't be sure, but I thought she met my eyes with her black ones, and I could swear she mouthed two words at me. Never again. Okay, we're halfway through our top 10 creepypastas in at number 5 with lightning. The story begins with a man and his son moving into their new home on the night of a huge storm. The little boy is excited by all the lightning and talks about it all the next day. He does it again a few nights later and the night after that. Every morning he wakes up and tells his dad about the lightning, but the father tells him there were no more storms and thinks it's just a reoccurring dream from the first night. Then one morning he's reading the paper and the horror hits him like a truck. There's a story about a sexual predator who had been arrested for taking pictures of little boys through their windows as they slept with flash photography. But it gets worse. The next day the boy runs up to the dad and says, Dad, Dad, there's no more lightning at my window anymore. The dad says, oh, it died down, did it? And the boy replies, no, it's just in my closet. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to go anywhere near that closet. I want to move on to number four, which is called The Girl in a Photograph. One day, a boy was at school when he found a picture on the grass outside of the most beautiful girl he'd ever seen. She had a dress with tights on and red shoes, and her hand was holding up a peace sign. The boy thought she was so beautiful that he decided he had to find her. He asked everyone in the school, and even his own family, but nobody recognized her. Defeated, he went to bed that night with the picture next to his bed, but was awoken by a tapping and giggling from the window. But by the time he got there, it was gone. He had no luck finding answers the next day but was awoken again that night by a tapping and giggling at the window. He followed the sound outside this time, across the road, where BAM! He was hit and killed by a car instantly. The driver jumped up and ran to the boy and found the picture in his hand. He saw a girl wearing a dress with tights on and red shoes and holding up three fingers. Alright guys, we've reached our last few creepypastas here with number three and it's called The Affair. It tells the story of a man named Jeremy who divorced his wife Gail when he finds out she's been having an affair. All he knows about Gail's new lover is that he's called Chamberlain. As they separate, he notices that Gail has more and more bruises on her each day, but decides to keep his distance as their relationship is already over. Then one day, Gail disappears, no note or text, and Jeremy thinks, well, if I haven't heard from her in 24 hours, I'll let the police know. The next day, he's on his way to work when he gets pulled over by a police car behind him. The officer says he pulled Jeremy over because he noticed his trunk had popped open and asked him to come and look. As they go to the back of the car, they open the trunk to find the lifeless body of Gail in the fetal position. The officer immediately cuffs Jeremy, pins him to the police car, and calls for backup on his radio. He says, this is Officer Chamberlain requesting backup and an ambulance. Oh snap. That was a good one, but let's move right on to our number two, which is simply called The Story. It's a tale of a man who books a room into a hotel with just one condition. Don't look in one room that is out of bound. It's off limits completely. He agrees and walks to his room, but on the way he sees the forbidden room, and his curiosity gets the better of him. He tried to enter, but the door was locked, so he took a peek through the keyhole. He saw a normal room with a woman in the corner whose skin was completely white. She had her back to the door. Shocked, the man went to his room for the night. The next day, he decided to take another look through the keyhole as he passed the forbidden room. But this time, all he saw was red. A deep, thick, unmoving red. He told the woman at the front desk, who didn't look too surprised, she said, you looked through the keyhole, didn't you? And he nodded. She continued, well, I might as well tell you the story. A long time ago, a man murdered his wife in that room, and her ghost haunts it. But these people were not ordinary. They were white all over, except for their eyes. Their eyes were a deep, deep red. Whoa, okay guys, all right, so far in our creepypasta, we've seen monsters, we've seen murderers, we've seen molesters. But for us, none of them can touch the king of all creepypasta. It's the smiling man in at number one. One day, a guy was walking alone at night when he first noticed him. On the far end of the street was a silhouette of a man dancing. It was a strange dance, similar to a waltz, and he was slowly coming closer. The guy tried to move around him, and as he did, he noticed the man was not only dancing, he was smiling at the sky, his eyes open and wild. By this point, the guy was freaked out and crossed the road, but when he looked back, he saw the smiling man was crouched on the floor behind him. The smiling man rose slowly and continued his dance towards the guy, eyes to the sky and smiling even bigger. The guy confronts him, saying, what do you want? 
But the smiley man just turned and danced away slowly. The guy walks on before turning to check on the smiling man, but now he was running full speed towards him, and he ran too. He ran as far and as fast as he could all the way home without looking behind him once, but he did end up with possibly the most scary creepypasta of all time. Alright guys, that was our top 10 scariest creepypastas of all time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you know any better ones, let us know in the comments below. In the meantime, thanks for watching guys. My name's Danny Berg. Until next time, see you in a bit. Alright guys, be sure to subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 if you want to stay up to date with all the great Top 10 videos we have on this channel. There's also two more floating right there if you just want to click one right now. So give it a click if you want. Just saying. You know, I'll wait. No, I've got to go. Anyway guys, see you in a bit.